Cornwall is changing. We have an aging population and everyone, regardless of age and ability, would like to be able to earn a living doing something that's meaningful to them. I'm Laura Lloyd, Communications Manager for the Inclusivity Project. When I told my father-in-law that we were planning to move to Cornwall, he said, well, that's where people go to retire. And I suppose traditionally, it is somewhere where older people came to make the most of the quality of life and young educated people went away from to the cities to get job opportunities. And here we were moving here to build a house on a hill. So I grew up in Devon, so I'm almost back to my roots. We can work remotely, even up here at the top of the hill. We've got super fast broadband to the shed, so I can sit there and work on my computer whilst dad's working on the building. My name is uh, Robert Eads and I'm 69 at the end of next month and I'm a builder. I also work intermittently at uh, uh, an events venue in Devon, building walls, carpentry, all sorts. And that, that without a doubt helps financially, yes. Well, I think retirement comes upon one. For myself, I'm a self-employed person, so I, I'm not in the grip of an organisation that might say, you're too old now, we need to yet let the youngsters in. I happen to enjoy my work, so I keep going. The older I get, the less I'm able to do. I slow up, of course. So I suppose one way that I've adapted to getting older is that uh, I tend to do a burst of work and then have a rest and do something else. We needed gabions on this site because it's on, on a hill and therefore the, uh, the sections that you cut out of the hill require shoring up and that's a lot of stone and yes, so I filled the gabions with stone by hand and with the help of a digger. At the Inclusivity Project, we have kept on talking to all the small businesses. Some have had to move their services online. Some have had to let staff go. They're all trying to survive. Our partners, Age UK Cornwall and the Isles of Scilly, the Local Enterprise Partnership and Disability Cornwall all pulled out all the stops during COVID to serve their members. They were doing everything from giving out PPE, to giving out information and running phone lines to delivering hot pasties to people's houses. At the Inclusivity Project, we have University of Exeter researchers working on the project too. And they adapted their research during COVID-19 to respond to the issues of the day. Dr. Daniel Derbyshire studies behavioral economics for the University of Exeter. He was already studying implicit bias but during Black Lives Matter, people really wanted to understand bias in the workplace. He offered his unconscious bias test online so people could become aware of their own bias against age and disability particularly. And then, as a continuation of his research, he started looking into the specific wording of job adverts and the specific elements of job offers that make them appealing to an older workforce. Dr. Eshmael Kebmati Morizai from the University of Exeter studies complex systems. He ran collaborative workshops that asked people to map the key factors affecting the employment gap. So he could understand, if we make a policy change here, does it have the right knock-on effect over there? Dr. Emilou Ratz and Dr. Lucy Zabuva from the University of Exeter together do qualitative research. When coronavirus hit, they reviewed past studies of shock and resilience and what was helping local businesses adapt and survive. Coronavirus is having a huge impact on all of us and here at the Inclusivity Project we've been working for, to find ways to adapt our research to fit with all of those changes. So we're looking at the existing literature on SMEs and how they've responded to crises and external shocks in the past. And we're going to be looking to see how businesses have responded and adapted to those sorts of events and especially what kinds of transferable lessons there are and we'll be looking to pass those on to SMEs who are currently working to cope with COVID-19. We have to be patient, we have to be flexible. Stress and burnout isn't going to get our house built faster. People do care about other people. 
So many brilliant and imaginative ways coming through to make those tiny changes in workplace well-being. They make all the difference. Trying new things in terms of policies, looking after staff well-being, making improvements in terms of workplace well-being, expanding your team to be more diverse and inclusive, and creating new products and services that help all of that happen. And if, I don't, if I'm not doing something creative, not necessarily physical, um, I begin to get gloomy. So get on the Inclusivity Project mailing list, follow us on social media, tell us what you're doing towards diversity and inclusion and improvements in workplace wellbeing. And the Inclusivity Project will bring you the voices from the ground backed up by academic research. Because ultimately, diversity enriches business. <laughs>